I'm Lima Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at tempo and time signature changes in Ableton Live. So, tempo change we might want to do within our compositions, either as a, as a general change that changes from one beat to the next, or as a gradual change and create some more dynamics to our compositions. Time signature changes we might want to do for different rhythmic feels and different emphasis on certain beats. And we can do this in either session view or in arrangement view. So first we'll start in arrangement view. So I'm going to just create a starting point here, so a MIDI clip. And if you look at the global setting for the actual arrangement project, that I have uh, the time signature in 4-4, and the tempo is at 120, so it's the default settings. Um, and I'll just very quickly put in a starting drum beat. So if we've got four beats, and let's offset the second and fourth with a clap, and just go for a very standard house kind of vibe here. Okay, so that might repeat in the context of just making a, a global change. Let's do eight bars of that. Okay, now for time's sake, I've changed it to four, just so we don't have to have so much uh, playback. Um, and if I want to make a time signature change at this point, I can just control click up here where we can normally add locators and we can also insert a time signature change. So I can actually put in, if I want to go into a, a waltz kind of three, four, I can do that. And you'll notice that the grid has changed now. So before we had four beats for every bar, now we have three beats for every bar as well. So same principles, I can go in there and I can actually create a new drum beat. And have my three, four time signature change there too. So let's round that up to eight and make that our loop here. So we've got two different time signatures within one idea. Okay, so that's inserting time signatures on the uh, arrangement timeline. Now let's have a think about if we want to make a tempo change to this. So let's, uh, for instance, do a duplicate of that idea. But for this part of the idea, I want to have a different tempo. So I was at 120 and I want to change that. So this is where automation comes into place. So what we want to do is basically click the tempo uh, readout at the top here and show automation, which will basically save us the bother of clicking around. So the master track has now been opened up. Uh, automation is enabled. And you can see here, the lowest value of this red line here is 60, and the highest is 200. So we can choose to make a tempo change here um, globally. So if I highlight all of this section here, I can do a drop down tempo change here. And I did actually neglect to change the time signature for the repeat of what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put in 4-4 again here. And then at this point, add in my 3-4 change as well. So now what we have, if I just go to this section, is a immediate tempo change. Okay, so let's go back a few steps and we'll do the same kind of process, but we'll do it in session view this time. So I'm going to drag my 4-4 up to the first scene that I have here. And let's just remove our changes to the time signature in arrangement view. So globally we're at 4-4 here. And I want to make this sure that this scene represents the time signature I want, which is set to 4-4 right now. And let's get my 3-4 clip and run that here and change its behavior to be 3-4 instead. So 4-4 four, four, and 3-4. Now alternatively, if I want to do this as a starting point in session view, 
It's a similar thing to when we're creating um, parts for our uh, clips and arrangement view. As long as you specify the time signature before you create the clip, the clip will inherit those properties of the time signature. So if I double click here, I have a 4-4. Four, four. We launch this scene, so it's in 4-4 four, four again. So that's 4-4. Four, four. And if I double click in there, I create a clip called in 4-4. Four, four. And then if I double click, in this scene here, which is the 3-4 scene, I have a clip that also represents 3-4 as well. This leads me on to the, the next point to make, actually. So uh, actually, before we get to that, there's one more thing just to say on this topic. So I've done time signatures in scene view there. The other thing I can do is tempo change. So if I duplicate that scene, we can just go to this tempo for this particular scene and drop that down. And then when we move between launching this scene and the next, we'll get the same as the automated tempo change, except we can launch this and do it at will as we're experimenting between our different scenes. So let's just put ourselves a similar beat to what we had before there. I'll just copy that clip across just to hear the difference. Okay, so static changes again, time signature changes, and then having uh, tempo changes as well. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is this inheritance of the time signature that's happening with the clips. If we're in a specific time signature when we create the clip, it will take on board that time signature as well. But we can change those properties too. So let's, let's sort of go back here. So back to arrangement. Let's go back to the 4-4 world for a minute loop around that. So the backbone or the main meter of what I'm working on here is a 4-4 measurement. Okay, so it's kind of our default electronic music uh, time signature. Now I'm going to bring in a percussion piece, but I want this percussion piece to rotate at a different number of beats compared to our 4-4. Four four. So a 3-4 would be a good example of this. So technically we would have a looping point that this, that's that long, three rather than four beats. So if I go in and create myself a new MIDI clip, what I can do here is change the time signature to be independent of the time signature that's running global. And this is called polymeters. So I have a backbone meter, which I'm using, which is my 4-4. Four, four, and that's what the metronome will represent as it plays. So it'll emphasize the first beat, play three more beats, then emphasize the next new downbeat of the next bar. But we can insert other overlapping layers with different meters. So again, polymeters here. So this one's at 3-4. I need to make sure that the loop is also the length of the clip, which it is here. So as I stretch this out, you'll notice that these repeat points differ from one bar to the next based on that 4-4 four, four meter that's running. So this is the additional meter running over the top of it. So for speed's sake, I'll just quickly play in or uh, enter in a randomized kind of rhythm, but it is going to repeat in a 3-4 fashion. Okay, so here's an interesting thing with the polymeters. You can choose at what point you want to reinstate the beginning of that polymeter again. So at the moment, we're doing it every four bars. Now, if I continue my 4-4 four, four for another four bars, I can start extending. Notice how I'm not duplicating here, which would reinstate the beginning of that clip and its downbeat. I'm instead going to extend the looping. So the 3-4 is continuing until the end of that eight bar phrase. So you get a bit more of a chance of different possible combinations of that polymeter running over the, the main meter of playback. Here you get a sort of certain uh, sort of song phrase section being confirmed when that polymeter eventually starts back down on whichever place you choose the downbeat to be, which in this case is the beginning of every eight bars. 
Okay, so we've looked at doing time signature changes on the arrangement timeline. We've done it in session view within the scene properties. We've also done tempo changes in the scene properties as well as on the uh, timeline using master automation for the tempo track. The last thing I want to show you is how you can do a similar thing, but do it dynamically. So you will perform these tempo changes and capture it in as a live part of what you're going for. So I have a project here, which is already pre-programmed in with some tempo changes, but we'll remove that and then we'll, we'll kind of put that in manually uh, afterwards as well. Now I've opened up the new project, which has some static tempo changes already in on the master track, but I'm gonna remove those and we're gonna do a dynamic live tempo change for a more humanized feel. So there's tempo changes here ranging between 100 up to 115 beats per minute. And I will play this for you so you get a sense of, of what it sounds like. Okay, so you can hear how the tempo helps this have some sense of movement from the beginning introduction to the main body of the idea and then a final kind of sign off ending to the composition as well. And as mentioned, between 100 and 115 roughly. So let's remove all the automation here. And what we're gonna to do to get that dynamic performance is we're gonna make sure we're ready to record automation and we're gonna actually map the tempo control. So I'll go to MIDI map and use one of these uh, MIDI CC controls and you'll see straight away the moment that assignment of that controller to um, the tempo gives me way too much range. It gives me between 20 to 999 beats per minute. It would be physically impossible for me to do any smooth small gestures of tempo change. So the reason why I take a note before was putting like a low range that I might want to use and a high range, so 102 to 115. Turn MIDI map mode off now. And then we can change this dynamically and capture our automation into the project as well. Okay, so I could take a few takes if I wanted to get that more tight in terms of the timing changes, but that's how we can get a more dynamic tempo change. So in this video, we've covered tempo change and time signature change across session view and arrangement view. And then finally, how we can make it a bit more humanized and less perfect and mechanical by utilizing things such as MIDI controllers to record a live tempo change.